Joe? Right on. Good morning, y'all. Thanks. Joe's been blowing the show far at Ancient Days for three years now. It's definitely a tradition. So coffee's not kicking in. I hope that woke you up. But <laughs> no, it was a surprise. Thanks, actually, uh, just for being here this early. This is Ancient of Days, the third one, Ancient of Days 2005 UFOs and Bible Prophecy Conference. Uh, I'm not normally up this time of morning, so thanks to those of you who actually, especially if you drove in last night, Mike Heiser got in about two hours ago. We'll see him shortly. And I'm guessing there's going to be a few in the room and throughout the day not quite sure what you've gotten yourself into by being here. So the only reason that I'm the first speaker is I've got to catch a few people up on the probably very dubious topic of biblical ufology to date. Because UFOs in the Bible, it's a pretty specialized field of study already. And it's a niche market, you could say for sure. Um, but that field is going to be narrowed significantly, I think, just by tweaking it to focus on Bible prophecy. And it, once you've studied this from a biblical perspective, though, and you see that the Bible does indeed have coherent answers related to the UFO and abduction phenomena, it begins to raise some questions about where it's all going. I think a lot of you are familiar with those questions in your own mind. And we all realize, you'd say, that the masses aren't particularly interested in these specific topics yet. But um, you're probably, I hope you know you're a little bit crazy even for being interested in it yourself right now at this point in time. At least you're ahead of your time, if I wanted to be nice about it. But honestly, if what any of us believe about this stuff is even close to being true, I think close to the whole world is going to be asking the same questions that brought you here soon enough. I believe, probably if quite a few of you do, that there's probably more than one major event on the horizon that's going to create that interest globally. And what we've done here, the purpose of the conference is to bring together the very few people who have actually studied UFOs and the Bible from an orthodox and defendable position. Um, to have some well-studied answers, or at least some possibilities available to the world when that time does come. Because whether you look at UFOs uh, and future events in terms like Art Bell's The Quickening or Stephen Bassett's Stephen Greer's Disclosure event, or whether you consider it all the, the grand delusion, what I think a lot of people fail to realize on this topic about the UFO phenomenon is that uh, sooner or later it's going to all come down to choosing sides. And if that's true, it's important that I think the best information is available just to help people in making their certain ultimate choices about life, the universe, and everything. And I, but I think most of you in this room now, um, you're well beyond asking, are UFOs real or do they exist? Um, that puts you ahead of the curve compared to most people, normal people, as long as normal means believing everything the government and the press tells us about things. But your questions, you've gotten into things more like, well, why are they here, and how is all this likely to play out? So like I said, this is definitely a tiny, tiny niche market. So we're going to go where most UFO conferences never go to even hopefully begin to answer those questions. There's a few that were here when we did this last year. Went, we went where no UFO conference has gone before. Uh, some of you were here, but we brought together both secular researchers and big-name ufologists together with Christian theologians. Some aren't exactly UFO enthusiasts, but we all presented each other's information. We all heard each other out, and then we had a panel discussion afterwards. And that went on for four days. It was truly historic. We all know there's a little bit of animosity between most of the church and most of the UFO community. But at least uh, I realized, and if you were here, you saw it, we kind of struck at the center of that and built some bridges, obviously. But um, who was here? I, I can recognize at least half of you. Hey, raise your hand. Okay. Good. Um, I might as well tell you this year, it's just kind of a running joke. This year's isn't as good, but it's hard to duplicate that kind of success, honestly, from what we brought together. Because this year's topics are a little more speculative. Last year's talks, they were extremely important just in understanding the evidence for and the reality of the UFO and abduction phenomena, but whatever you think is behind it all. And we also presented a lot of fascinating theology, too, that once it's digested, it gets people thinking along the lines of what we're covering today. 
And that's why the theology DVD was sent to everyone who pre-registered. And if you haven't seen that stuff already, your head's likely to explode maybe by the end of David Flynn's talk today. If you're not familiar with these speakers or these topics, there's, yeah, there's a couple people nodding already because you've seen David Flynn's talk from last year already, and people's heads might explode later on once they see it. See, if, if you're laughing, you know what I'm talking about. But getting down to business, just like I said, my job is to catch you up. Uh, just a bit. And if you've seen my presentations last year, you know that I usually just kind of focus on teaching and just kind of spitting out the information, but without really getting personal or uh, sharing the motivation, or you might say the, even the passion behind what I do. Um, but that's where I'm going to start today, and uh, I'll stay there for a while too, just so you know how I got into all this, what motivates me to run the websites I do, to travel and to hold UFO conferences, things like that. So personally speaking, I got active in this field in 1997. Uh, somewhat after the Heaven's Gate cult suicide in California occurred. And anybody who doesn't remember that event, it was a group of 39 otherwise pretty intelligent people killed themselves in order to hop on a UFO that they believed was hiding behind the comet. Uh, the members of that group were convinced that uh, their leader, Marshall Applewhite, was the Christ or the Messiah for this age. And uh, it's much like the UFO cult leader, Rael, is telling people these days, and his group, this is their book, The True Face of God, meant to be an alien. His group has over 40,000 people today. So 39 or 40,000, they're all important souls. But uh, it may sound crazy <clears throat> that people do believe that sort of thing, but this is America, and I respect that people have died just to give people the right to believe things like that and even to act according to their own beliefs and their own conscience. So denying other people their freedom of right or religion, that's not my issue at all. That's not what I'm about. I just think that everyone has the right to your own beliefs and to follow your own conscience. But for me in 1997, the real issue was my conscience because I wasn't really following it back then. Because what about me personally, as a childhood experiencer of the little gray bug-eyed men and things that go bump in the night, uh, most of my life I'd long had an interest uh, and more than a passing curiosity, you'd say, for sure, about the UFO phenomena in general. Um, I believe it was all real from experience, no doubt. Um, and I've spent a pretty significant portion of my young life researching it. And there's some, we'll understate for now, there's major truths involved in the, uh, what goes on when these beings are your childhood friends. And there's also some trauma involved in it for, if you believe the, uh, we're, the polls from last decade, it's one in 40 people, if you believe that a broker and Gallup polls on that. But we'll understate that now. And I'm well aware now of uh, the stories of other people today who claim that they've had marvelous experiences with the aliens. And last year in one of my talks already we dealt with that, what some researchers, or some researchers call um, screensaver memories or even abductive brainwashing. And I know some people get bent out of shape because not everybody like chooses to give equal time to what people call good experiences and good aliens and and they're welcome to hold their conferences too like I said this is America that's just my answer to that but I do get offended kind of for myself and the 90 percent majority of abductees when other people want to discount or ignore what the rest of us have to say on that topics but even with all that aside Number one, like 15 years ago and more, I just uh, I wasn't aware of other people's marvelous trips to the light, fantastic with the aliens. And number two is that that just really wasn't my experience. Um, based on what little I'd read in the 80s and the early 90s is I had every reason to believe that I hadn't seen the last of these guys in my life either. Because the research that's come out in the last 15 years or so, uh, one of the foremost commonalities of this experience is that if, if you were a childhood abductee, well then you will be an adulthood abductee or experiencer, if you like that word better. So were your children too. And most people will tell you, I think erroneously, if you're familiar with Joe Jordan already, well that there's nothing that can be done about that. And if there's, I found, it's probably your experience too, if there's any one thing true about the male of the human species, it's we just don't like not being in control of our own destinies. You know, you probably run into that, especially if you're a woman. But what I wrote in, yeah, what I wrote in Come Sail Away in 1997 